Dhadak was a film which was an adaptation of a very popular Marathi film called Serat. Yeah. So when that film released, I was subjected to criticism which I had never experienced before. Almost I'm like, how can this happen to me? You're not a victim. True. You chose this, this happened to you. Now what it happened to you for is a story that will unfold. All these things in our philosophy, we call them as effects. Effects are never in your hand. Causes are in your hand. One of the first things that I was told about you years back was that he's a talented boy, but he believes in Buddhism. At that point, you go through so many emotions because there's an unborn child, she's in her eighth month. Now you can't enter that room. No one can enter that room. And we can hear all of us chanting, but we can't see each other. And we are just chanting and there's a vibration. And chanting only so that we don't take panicky decisions. We don't let the COVID virus affect our mind. Faith's job is not to remove obstacles. Faith's job is to prepare you to deal with them better. Welcome to another episode of Soul Safar with Bhav. Our next guest, Shashank Khaitan, is a very successful film writer, director and producer. After speaking to Shashank on this episode, I realized that what helps him navigate the highs and lows of the film industry is his strong belief in Buddhist philosophies. This episode will definitely give you a fresh perspective and give you tools to navigate your everyday life too. Shashank, welcome to Soul Safar with Bhav. Thank you so much. You know, there are very few people that you remember by their beliefs in life. And I remember that one of the first things that I was told about you years back was that he's a talented boy, but you know, he, believe, he believes in Buddhism. He fall, he, that's his belief system. And that is the one thing that stuck with me through the years. I'm so glad to have you here today. I am so happy that I'm here. We've known each other for so many years and I'm glad that we are doing this together. I'm going to jump right into it. How did you arrive at Buddhism as a philosophy? And was there any incident that, was there a catalyst that uh, pushed you towards it? How did you arrive at it? So I think the catalyst was my wife. She has been a practicing Buddhist for many, many years, almost 20 plus years now. Okay. And of course, uh, there was a time when we were dating and she would keep telling me about the philosophy and the belief. And as uh, all boyfriends and future husbands behave, they're like, I know it all and you know nothing about life. And uh, But uh, one thing I always would see in her is that she had this indomitable spirit, like she was unbreakable. In, the, in any circumstance, whatever challenges she was facing in life, in relationships, in, at work, she always had this belief that I'm going to win over this, right? And so the more I kind of understood from that philosophy and I spoke to her about it, mm. I realized that nothing of that is external, everything comes from within. And that was something which was really, really attractive to me and that kind of made me want to know it more right. and kind of study it more. At that time, I was kind of uh, pursuing the film industry and the film industry from where I started out in a city like Nasik, mm. at the time when there was no internet, we literally had no access within. Right. It almost seemed like an unsurmountable, uh, you know, this peak where you were never going to reach it. And um, when you kind of came from that city to Mumbai, you would hear so many things which were disturbing. It kind of made you question your own beliefs. It made you... Uh, sometimes weak, sometimes scared, that I wanted something which could ground me. I needed something in my life which could get me back to the basics. And this philosophy became that because this philosophy, which I follow, which is called Namyo Ho Renge Kyo, it's the philosophy of uh, cause and effect. And very, uh, we all kind of hear of it when we say Jesse Karni, Vesi Bharni, right? We Correct. speak about karma and cause. And the more I kind of started studying about it, it kind of became very clear to me that every challenge that I'm going to face in this life is going to be within. It's not going to be from the outside. The outside is the manifestation of your within. Right. So if I'm scared, I'm going to end up putting myself in circumstances where I'm going to get further scared. Hmm. But if somewhere I have 
hope and somewhere i have positivity i'm going to start putting myself in those situations and surprisingly end up interacting with people also from the same sphere of life or what we call as the same life force right. so my biggest catalyst then became that i wanted to kind of only depend on myself i didn't want anything from the outside to shake me or affect me positively or negatively right, right? because sometimes in our industry success can also be a deterrent and failure can also be a deterrent correct so i really wanted something which can ground me every day give me a process in life which can become something i can follow right and i think that's when i adopted this philosophy of cause and effect that how do i create causes in my life which i know will result into good effects in my life i started off as a script writer i was writing i was pitching my film and that's when cause and effect was explained best to me we tend to pray for results right so kids are praying for mujhe pass kara do hmm someone is praying ki mereko job chahiye i need a job i need uh, i want to fall in love i want to get married yeah all these things in our philosophy we call them as effects these are not causes right now effects are never in your hand causes are in your hand and i remember the application i was writing a script which ultimately became my debut film uh, it was called hamti sharma ki dulhaniya and when i was writing it and i was in an initial phase mm. i met one of my uh, chanting uh, members or leaders as we call them and he was asking me so what's your life's goal what do you want to do and i was like you know i want to make a blockbuster film he's like great i don't understand you so i'm like i want to make a blockbuster film mm. like i don't understand you explain it i said i want to make a film which will do 100 crores he like i just can't understand you so he kept kind of telling me that and i'm like okay this man's mad he's not understanding me it's right. a communication gap and then i finally said you know what i just want to write the best film possible and then he said now thou you're talking something which you can do so that's when i understood that's a cause how i will how my film will be received how my film will be viewed is mm-hmm. not in my hand right what is in my control is can i write the best script possible can i write the best uh, make the best film possible i cannot control audiences i right. cannot control their reactions i cannot control box office right but i can do the best i can do right and that was my you know the, the that was the bell that i'm like oh my god this is what cause means hmm. so that really changed my approach on on an everyday level because then i started taking everything in my life hmm. and started isolating that Okay am I actually praying for an effect or am I praying for a cause right and then you start designing a process in your life which actually becomes your foundation right so when we talk about so many different faiths that exist mm. when they give you a process of get up at a certain time follow a certain thing and things will become good it's not magic or a, it's not a miracle it's you have dedicated yourself to that process every day right so if i have to lose weight i can't be sitting and praying i want to lose weight but because if i'm while praying having a chocoba it's not going to help me lose right, weight right. but if i just determine every day that okay i'm going to reach the gym in the morning hmm. and i'm going to try and do the best workout i can do for one year, uh, you know one hour right i might not know anything else about nutrition or fitness but after 6 months the results are guaranteed right. i would have made a difference in my lifestyle in my fitness in my appearance something or the other so that's where the practical application came into my life right and that's something now i follow on a day to day basis that how do i just focus on causes so i i also believe that when you arrive at that epiphany right. the aha moment or like you said the defining moment that is just the first step into the door correct and from that moment on that belief is constantly challenged oh. because it's not a it's not a linear journey Correct. there are going to be your dark days then there will be days when you'll feel like oh great and Correct. like you said you don't attach to happiness or to sorrow Correct. how did you use these philosophies on your dark days to remind yourself that it's right. fine even this is part of the process yeah i mean and and you know rightly said it's a practice it is not something which you can ever master because right. we are ultimately humans we are ultimately going to be affected by good days bad days good things in life bad things in life successes mm. failures uh, finding your love fighting with your love all of that right um so you have to stop reacting and you have to start responding on the dark days so what happens is when you're happy mm. we call it something like a life state we have this term in our practice called life state okay. so you are in a higher life state you are somewhere feeling happy 
but when you experience something dark something sad your life state is vulnerable it is what we call the lower life state where actually at that point you are edgy you are more likely to snap or react mm. what this practice has taught me over the years is that when you are happy then also take charge of the situation and don't react to anything take your time and respond to it similarly in the darker times again don't react because chances are that reaction is coming from your lower life state where at some point i might be experiencing jealousy against let's say a fellow filmmaker so and i'm a, i'm at a stage where i can't make a film right it's not happening for years i might see a filmmaker see his film and react very adversely to him hmm. but if i'm in a happy state i might say are wow us everyone's doing so well in life right that's the time when you actually go back to the crux of the practice and say i'm not going to react right i'm going to respond what that allows you to do is actually it allows you to reflect within your own life and understand where this darkness is coming from or where this feeling is coming from right. that time when you choose and that's also a choice when you choose not to react and respond is actually the first step of awareness right so like most of our battles are when we are not aware right we might be going through a very dull patch dark patch difficult patch but we are not aware of our own weaknesses or darknesses the minute you take a choice that okay i'm going to stop reacting and i'm going to respond actually means you're now aware and you're aware that the work needs to be done from within right and that's the time when you actually start having a conversation with yourself that okay what's the problem how do i arrive at the solution mm. what are the ways that i can deal with it and that in itself starts unblocking ideas or solutions in your own life right and you can start then responding to them slowly now that you have reached this point of the episode please show us some love by liking sharing and subscribing to our channel we always t- uh, talk about in our practice about two words which are very important which is courage and compassion you have to have compassion for yourself as well sometimes when you have been an overachiever or someone who believes he is very good at his job someone who believes he is very hard working we tend to be very hard on ourselves as well we almost kind of put ourselves in this crystal that nothing can go wrong or nothing should go wrong because i am so hard working or i am so uh, you know disciplined right but that's not how life functions you you could do everything correctly and still something can strike you yeah so it's also important not to be hard on yourself it's right. important at that point to be compassionate and say okay it's happened nothing that you could have done about it and then sometimes you require courage you require courage to sometimes address your own issues sometimes in life we know what the problem is mm. but we don't want to address it it could be with our spouse or partner that there is a problem we need to chat mm. but we always fear that if this chat happens it can go either way yeah. but it's important that chat happens Perfect. that courage sometimes knowing that there is a problem i'm aware of it and i won't react but respond allows you to you know have a whole hearted yeah. chat about that it's amazing that you mentioned self compassion because again a philosophy that believes in non attachment correct sometimes people get so attached to a practice correct that and discipline right. is that if they are not able to follow that practice or discipline they go into self loathing correct i know there are many philosophies that say after a point you detach from the practice and become the practice correct how have you followed that a superb question because for a long time i wanted to understand from my perspective what does detachment mean right and uh, again i'm not some guru or i haven't reached that level of thing but this is what i have experienced and studied and learned till now uh detachment does not mean the absence of happiness detachment also does not mean the absence of desire detachment also does not mean the absence of not experiencing joys detachment actually means not looking back and what that really means is we always talk about time we always talk mm-hmm. about the time is never stopping it's moving ahead so just imagine this we are born we are born and we are on a treadmill and now till the day we die this treadmill is only moving forward now, along the way you're moving forward you're going to have joys you're going to have sorrows you're going to meet people you're going to have relationships which will not last all of that will happen certain times we are very e- happy to move on we just move on easily sometimes we hold back mm. right now imagine let's say i and you met we have a very very strong bond 
something went wrong right and i am i am moving forward you have taken a different path you are moving if detachment here means if i keep looking back and trying to hold on to you that is attachment mm. now why that is bad is the belt is moving forward i am holding on to you and you are going on another path and somewhere my body is getting stretched now you can equate that body to your mind you can equate it to your emotions you can equate it to every aspect of your life and that's when you start feeling fear pain grief mm. but if you have the belief that me and you were meant to meet karmically and whatever we have experienced is part of that karmic journey even if i let go right now mm. we are soon going to meet again our equations are not unresolved we right. are going to meet again maybe in this birth maybe in a, in a later birth but this is not the end of the chapter that automatically becomes detachment because now i am back into the present i'm again looking ahead i'm back on that belt and now i'm ready to experience what's in front of me right i'm ready to again face my joys again face my sorrows and ready to move ahead so really in my so many years now of following faith i've realized this is what truly detachment is now when i look back and after having from my experience understood detachment i realized that okay there were so many things i held on to mm. which at that point gave me grief and actually i got over that grief only once i was able to let go of that correct that's the one thing which i've kind of adapted in my life that as a filmmaker as a father as a hu- husband as a son there are so many roles that i play every day and some roles you have expectations you want to expect from your partner you want to expect from your career right but what i've realized is i'm going to work and i'm going to be present if something which i wanted has not happened now it does not mean it's never going to happen right so i look forward rather than so that i can make it happen rather than look back and try to hold on to something thinking oh shit i could have made it happen right, right? so there is no i could have yeah. i'm looking at how can i make things happen right you know in this one question you've answered so many questions <laughs> like you know uh, about how what does death mean to you you've answered that question how how does one deal with grief in terms of buddhist philosophies you've answered that question it's a brilliant brilliant answer thank you uh, you use the word karma very yeah. often yes what according to you right is karma so i have tried to ask this question to many learned people uh, many of my fellow chanting members stuff and i went down to really basics of uh, what gautam buddha experienced right mm. what is the question so this is my very layman way of presenting it if we believe everyone is equal then why are people born in different circumstances with different problems right and we talk about if there is a super power which is governing us why would they be unequal right, right? so let's say we die and we are reborn or there is birth why is it that people are born unequal why is it that someone's born in riches someone is born in poverty why is it that someone is born with physical deformities mm. and why is it that someone's born completely healthy what are the parameters so for me that parameter is karma so some life that you took you had your actions that you uh, uh, undertook thoughts that you had they defined your life once you passed away you took some of those parameters into your next life mm. if most of the parameters were good you were born with favorable circumstances right if most of those parameters were bad you were born with those challenges this life gives you the opportunity to work on the parameters you are born with and create better parameters for yourself and change what we call your karma right so i believe that is what karma is in our belief thoughts are very powerful karmas we always attach karma with action mm. ki karm kar that is karma actually karma is thought right like so let's say you and i are chatting and let's say we've had a problem in our life mm. we both are sitting here today to mend ways if i come in with the attitude hey bhav to kabhi nahi samjhega mm. then i might say kind things to you but somewhere my thoughts are he is never going to change right nothing is going to happen from this meeting we'll have our coffees and we'll go away actually we might say good things lovely we'll keep in touch mm. but actually we'll never call each other right because nothing is resolved because my thought has created very powerful karma of saying that this relationship won't get resolved but if we come with a clean slate mm. and say that we've had our problems but let's have an honest conversation 
and our thought is not maligned our thought is like you know what we have to address it and solve it now that in itself has going to lead to a chain of command mm. within our actions which will help us sort our lives and then we might even not say sweet things to each other we might then say harsh things to each other we might say things which are truthful but because our intent is to solve something right we will both value that intent and actually walk out of this meeting saying hey something is resolved in our lives yeah. so for me that is karma that the thoughts the actions that we undertake and we are setting parameters for this life and a previous life you know and the other way to define karma is first of all in my belief nothing that happens in your life is an accident and it can be the most challenging thing but that's not an accident you were born to experience it right so some karma we are aware of so for example if i've cheated in an exam the professor catches me and i get a zero on my mark sheet mm. i know why this zero has happened because i know the karmas i created right. if i rob something and i end up in jail i know the karma but sometimes things happen to you which you are like you had an accident right a loved one passed away and you are like how can this happen to us we are not such bad people hmm. why did this happen that is a karma that you were born to experience this practice allows you that you don't get broken by that ensure that those parameters don't lead you to become a darker man or a bad man or a or someone who is you know negative in life or full of grief but how can i turn it into joy how can i turn it into some value creating objective right. and then move forward with that once you become conscious of that hmm. you are consciously trying to create good actions and good actions don't mean good actions for yourself, for yourself. good actions means good for yourself and the fun in front of you right so i might be a uh, co- company owner and i'm i might feel that i've cheated this guy out of money but my company has profited but somewhere i've created bad karma correct but if i can create a situation whereby i know i've done well for him and my company is also benefited yeah. then i've created good karma so that's the kind of uh, thought karma enables you to adopt right and i think that's where for me it's it's pretty much the crux of my belief and life you know it's amazing that you said that uh, when something happens to you that's unsavory Correct. you uh, you tell yourself that i came to experience this when i went through a time like this uh, you know in, instead of getting caught up in why did this happen to me somewhere the narrative in my mind was i came here to experience this and this is the experience i chose correct somehow it just gave me so much relief Absolutely. because you felt like you're not a victim True. you chose this this happened to you now what it happened to you for is a story that will unfold Amazing. so one of the things that i say uh, recently i've started saying is whenever there's a challenging situation of course i respond to it sometimes react to it and then i'm like let's see how this plays out correct and that just puts me so much in a state of acceptance i'm like let's see how let's see there's Wow. destiny you, you have hit the nail on the coffin as such as they say because in buddhism we have a very important uh, what do you call philosophy which is called voluntarily choosing your karma okay so in our faith we believe everything that we experience in our life is chosen the goods and the bads and the reason we have chosen the bad we have in fact voluntarily chosen the bad is actually to win over it hmm. and actually show the world that it can be done right so for example if i've chosen a disease i've chosen it to be able to fight it and show the world how to win over it right sometimes win does not mean that it is healed and i'm gone sometimes winning is just carrying that disease what is my life state we have always spoken about a very uh, popular hindi film is a film called anand right and in that rajesh khanna was the character playing anand who was going through a disease which was going to kill him hmm. he was aware of it but he chose to spread joy so he never won over it but in that process of spreading joy he actually won because he gave so many people love and hope right so that's exactly our philosophy of buddhism that of course our aim is to win over the obstacles but it is to be able to win over them with a life state which is amazing which is positive right. so in us we always believe every karma hmm. in our life is chosen it is not something which has happened by chance right. it has happened by choice. choice so i'm so glad you said this because 
it's something very tough to understand at times because we always tend to get into victim mode. We always tend like, why me? How can this happen yeah. to me? And victimhood is sweet. It's so <laughs> sweet. It's a sweet spot that you can right. just live in all your life. Absolutely. And and it's so tough sometimes to just get out of it. Yeah. And say that, hey, I am no victim. I've chosen this. I need to figure out, strengthen my life in a way that I can fight over it, win yeah. over it. Also, it's amazing that you follow the Buddhist philosophies. And one of the philosophies are about impermanence. Correct. And you're in an industry that is the pure example of impermanence. <laughs> so how do you navigate the ups and downs of this industry? A lot of what we hear about, say the entertainment industry, are created notions. When you actually start working within the industry, you realize that everyone's doing a job. Yeah. You know, of course, there is glamour attached. There is a certain amount of <clears throat> fame attached, stardom attached and all of that. But ultimately, when you're down on the set, you're just working. Yeah. You are working. My father did it for 40 years in a different industry. I need to do it in this industry. Right. It's ultimately boils down to work. Hmm. And we are actually very fortunate in this industry that we get to meet new people every day. We get to experience so much more life hmm. because sometimes when you're in a corporate environment, you tend to spend years amongst just the same, same people. Way. The very fact that I'm in this industry, with every film, my entire crew changes, my cast changes. They are all living out their karmas, I am living my, my karma. And that's why in Buddhism, we have a very important concept that the person sitting in front of me is not Bhav, hmm. he is a Buddha. And by Buddha, I mean, this person has the potential for the greatest good in life. And if I look at view at everyone like this, I might actually face someone who is hurting me, but if rather than thinking that this person is hurting me and it's troubling me, I'm actually looking at the person and thinking that this person has the potential for goodness. Mm. And trust me, when that atti attitude shifts, you actually don't feel hurt. You actually feel an opportunity that we can actually change something within ourselves. It's very rare that it's going to happen that you go to someone like, hey man, how are you? And he's like, how dare you do this to me? It's very rare. Yeah. And even if it happens, that person must be dealing with certain circumstances which are not explainable. He cannot deal with life. And at that time comes your practice that can you have compassion for that person. Right. Is there a practice that you follow uh, to root into your self-belief every day? Because again, being in the industry that you are, there's so much scrutiny on a daily basis. You walk out of your house and there'll be people uh, papping you. Uh, and every, there are so many highs and lows where sometimes you start questioning yourself that, oh, am I really this person? Am I really good, bad? Is there a specific practice that you follow so that you know that this is me, everything else is white noise? I chant twice a day. So our practice of Buddhism has something where we, we repeat a prayer called Namyo Ho Renge Kyo. And we also have a prayer which is a morning and evening prayer, prayer called the Gongyo. And this prayer is really praying to your own higher life state and basically reminding yourself that every moment I need to be, try to be at the highest life state of my life. Try and be as positive, good, whatever you can say. Over the years I've realized it's a conversation with myself that I'm kind of every morning and evening talking to myself, understanding where my problems are and knowing that all solutions lie within me. There is nothing on the outside. Right? If I have to give you an example, I made a film called Dhadak. Hmm. Dhadak was a film which was an adaptation of a very popular Marathi film called Serat. Yeah. So when that film released, I was subjected to criticism which I had never experienced before. Right? At one point, everyone was happy because it was a box office success and it was making a lot of money. But I received criticism which at that point I couldn't understand whether it is personal, whether it is film related. And I found myself for a f some time, almost I'm like, how can this happen to me? That question popped up. And then I actually went back to this prayer of saying that, okay, nobody can answer this question. I need to figure it out. And then I actually went back and realized that, okay, the causes for this was also created by me because I chose to make that film. I was the one who went to my producers and said, I want to adapt it. I was absolutely aware of what that film means to... Uh, you know, what that film means in Maharashtra, what's the box office, what is the success of the film. I chose to make it. 
so now i need to accept the goods and bads that come with it i'm accepting the money that's coming with it so i need to accept the criticism because it's not a creation of anybody else it's a creation of my own decision the day i started praying like that i was not angry anymore hmm. i was not angry with anybody any of the critics anyone who praised or criticized the film i was like fine it's another experience in my life at that stage of life when wherever i was i chose to adapt a movie it turned out the way it turned out it got the reactions it got the success and the failure great i've learned something from it i am going to move on now next time i'm going to train my decision making through this process so next time for example if another film comes to me for adaptation i will choose my decisions more wisely there are very few people who know me personally there is no one who knows me completely right it's only me only i am aware of myself completely even my closest people know me they know me probably the best mm. but they don't know me completely. completely so i need to be able to filter that criticism out and say that they might be saying personal things but it's related to the movie right that also allows me to not have any ill feelings towards them it allows me to not have any bad wishes towards them so tomorrow when i meet them personally i can have a very happy conversation with them which is warm and value creating rather than hold oh you didn't like my film i mean it's a film yeah so i think that chanting morning and evening that i do every day and i try and do half an hour of it in the morning and evening is my ground to kind of in the morning make a determination for my life and in the evening reflect upon my day and say okay hopefully i have done things correctly hmm. i might have made some mistakes i'll rectify it tomorrow yeah. so i'm not hard on myself i'm not a machine I am going to make mistakes. I have to be compassionate to myself, but say, okay, I'll learn from this and become a better person tomorrow. Right. I was having a conversation on the podcast with somebody else, and they get, they said a very, it's a beautiful story where light, a spark of light, one day said that I want to experience my own light, and another spark of light said, okay, for you to experience your own light. i will disguise as the darkness and come to challenge you so that when you are on your path of light and when you face me you will experience your own light but just remember that i am also light at that point absolutely now it seems like you're on that path of light discovering your own light and uh i know there has been there have been situations where your you have been challenged you told me that during covid when your wife was pregnant uh in her 8th month she contracted covid and your mom had covid at the same time and that sort of fear i can't even imagine because your light was being challenged in True. real time where you had no control over it to be fearful about yourself is another thing but to be fearful about other people who you love dearly right. Right. is just unimaginable True. how did you deal with it <laughs> you know uh... I think that's where our practice every day came in so strong because I remember uh, it started off with uh, I was un- I was shooting at the time mm. and of course we were trying to keep as many precautions and then suddenly my wife started experiencing some symptoms and uh, so we said okay we need to test immediately we started panicking and I was like oh my god I'm so guilty it's because of me she's not gone out too much how can it happen so it was my mom in law she me in the house we send and everyone else we send the reports out and then we get a call saying two people have got covid one is safe and i'm like it has to be me and my wife and my mom in law poor lady she has to manage turns out they are the ones who got it and i am the one who is absolutely safe and i'm like dude i'm the only one who is stepping out and i'm not been touched by it at that point you go through so many emotions because there's an unborn child she's in her eighth month now you can't enter that room no one can enter that room right right there was a door we've just opened the door i'm like some feet away we are looking at each other and i'm like what and she's like so you know what you go chant and i'll go chant and let's have faith that nothing's going to go wrong and i'm saying okay let's try that you know yeah. and i remember we were just chanting and i remember living in the sitting in the living room she is in the room my mom in law is in the other room and we can hear all of us chanting but we can't see each other and we are just chanting and there's a vibration and something along the way kept telling us that you know what you've done good things in life good things will happen you are going to get over this don't fear don't panic 
take the correct medical advice so suddenly what happens in that moment is rather than panicking you start making correct decisions so i remember then we started calling the doctor understanding can she she couldn't take covid medications because she is uh, pregnant Thank she has to take only basic paracetamol and take care of herself we just started breaking it down to few hours and saying let's reevaluate after every few hours let's reevaluate then in the night the night was really bad because she was experiencing the toughest symptoms in the morning i was like okay let's rush she said no let's wait for a few more hours i think i'm improving hmm. kept chanting that let's just be at the highest life state don't make any decisions out of panic let's take informed decisions and suddenly after 36 hours she's like you know what i'm okay i'm not 100% i can't smell i can't taste but i'm okay i i i don't feel as feverish so i'm like okay now the next few hours and we just kept breaking it down to 6 6 8 8 hours and suddenly we realized after 3 days we are finding ourselves in a comfortable situation and one thing we didn't stop doing is having faith and constantly chanting and chanting only so that we don't take panicky decisions we don't let the covid virus affect our mind right. you know we let the covid virus affect the body which it already entered right. not the mind right. so that if it enters the mind then all decision making is wrong right we just trusted the doctor mm. we said this doctor knows the history right from the beginning let's trust the doctor and take that and i think i really believe the wisdom in my family and most of them are practicing buddhists came from that decision of chant trust and evaluate and it's not blind trust it's not that ab ho jayega huh. we are evaluating okay. the situation but there is a medical team guiding us yeah. and we are evaluating it from a early early basis then that early basis became 6 hours to a day and then we were right. sort so you beautifully married logic and belief absolutely together absolutely. and it also sounds like the cause and effect that you talk about True. the principle you practiced it in real time absolutely we had to if you have to distill down three buddhist philosophies that will help our audience to just deal with daily stress correct what would they be i think the first thing is don't fear struggles and don't fear obstacles that will happen to you whichever faith you follow faith's job is not to d- remove obstacles and uh, challenges from your job faith's job is to prepare you to deal with them better it's like saying you might do net practice in cricket it's not that after doing 2 hours of net practice you're never going to get out on zero right those days are also going to happen but that is to ensure that the probability of you getting out on zero reduces and you start moving towards hitting a century that's why we practice similarly practice faith to build yourself rather than removing challenges from your life mm-hmm. that's never happening yeah. if you are born in this world you are going to uh, uh, face yes. challenges irrespective and once you build your own inner self to face it those challenges don't feel like challenges right. so a hit on the face doesn't feel as painful a second the toughest thing to do but i would just say it, mm. that don't look for solutions on the outside look for solutions on the inside and i say it from a very practical approach let's take a relationship let's say i'm having a problem with my wife our fights are getting very bitter i might call up a friend for a solution uh, a married friend right if that married friend is in a blissful relationship he will call me up and say are you mad marriages mein to aisa hota hai don't worry stick together now sticking together might actually be the worst thing for us based on our history i might now call another friend who might be going through shit in his own life he might be going through worse he'll say boss divorce man it's not meant for him men are supposed to be single this marriage is all fake please divorce her right none of these two friends actually know our lives correct they don't know our history they don't know what we deal with every day there are only two people who know their reality that's my wife and me we need to find the solution within our own lives mm. chatting with no one is going to help us so even they say if we when we take guidances or go to counselors the best counselors are the ones who actually encourage you to start talking no counselor will take a decision for you right the decision is yours yeah. we need to get to a stage where we can look at problems or things and say 
I need to find a solution within and not on the outside because nobody else knows my own life better than me. The other thing would be if, if from this chat you can derive that really focus on a process every day. You know, one of my favorite athletes in the world is Mahindra Singh Dhoni. Mm. Every interview of Mahindra Singh Dhoni that I have heard, whether he won the World Cup or he lost matches, he never talks about victory and defeat. He talks about the process he has put his team into. He always talks about that if you do a certain process every single day, results will come in your life. I really want to tell everyone in whichever field they are working in that, you need to discover that process in your life. Try and find that process and the results will come. Be patient. If you are patient, the process that you are doing, you will start doing it better every day. It will come to a point where you are doing it so well that there is no other option but for the result to come to you. So I would say this definitely could be hopefully three things that people can take out of this podcast and really apply it because it's all internal. For this, you don't need any gadgets. Yeah. You don't need anything but your own self. I find real life experiences very fascinating because you are not just talking. You have True. embodied what you're talking and it doesn't come from a space of this is what I did. So this is what you should do. Okay. That's when you know that the embodiment hasn't happened. True. In your case, also, when you speak, you're speaking like this is what worked for me. You hear it and Absolutely. if it works for you, it's a philosophy. If it doesn't work for you, maybe something else will work for you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank for you. Coming Thank you so much for having me here. I hope I could have been of any help. <laughs> of and, course. Uh, but I'm just so glad that I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know how difficult it is to balance your successes and failures in the film industry and this conversation with Shashank has sparked something inside of me. Let me know your key takeaways in the comments below and if you want us to explore Buddhist philosophies further. We would be back in two weeks with yet another episode of Soul Suffer with Bhav. Now healing has a face. <laughs>